Hey everyone and welcome to Small Bites. It is May and that means it is Mental Health Awareness Month. So here at Small Bites, we have decided to spend this month talking about mental health and helping you understand more about the resources and options that are available to you. talk about some of the misunderstandings about therapy. A lot of people don't know what therapy is or how therapy works, and so I want to talk about that. One of the most common misconceptions is that if you go to therapy, you have to talk about your childhood all the time. And while you might talk about your childhood, that is not necessarily the focus of therapy. Similarly, some people think that therapy is only focused on your feelings, that you just go and talk about your feelings all the time. Again, you do talk about your feelings, but there's lots of other parts of your life that is important to talk about. Some people think that therapists have an agenda or they're gonna give you advice or try to get you to do things or live your life the way they think you should. That's not true at all. Therapists are there to help you unfold your life in a way that best fits what you have in mind. Sometimes people think that you only go to therapy if something's wrong, that something has to be messed up in your life or there has to be some kind of disruption to warrant going to therapy, and that's not true. You can go to therapy just to make your life better. And another misconception is that going to therapy means that you're weak or that you're not able to handle things. On the contrary, going to therapy requires a lot of strength and it requires a lot of effort and willingness to be uncomfortable. And the process of therapy actually strengthens you. So that would be a little bit like saying, going to the gym makes you weak. That doesn't make any sense. Going to the gym makes you stronger. Therapy is gonna make you stronger too. It's kind of hard to describe exactly what therapy is, but there are some analogies that I really like. One analogy is that the therapist is holding a lantern for you, that the therapist is helping to shine light on what's going on in your life so that you can see it better, you can see what's going on around you better. Another analogy is that the therapist is like a mirror, that the therapist reflects back to you the things that are happening, the things you're saying, your goals, your values, just kind of shows back to you what you're saying so that you can see things more clearly. Some people consider a therapist as holding a ladder while you try to climb out of the pit of whatever's going on, of depression or despair or distress, that the therapist is there to hold steady while you do the work of getting out of that pit. So like I mentioned, therapy doesn't have to focus on your childhood only or on your feelings only. Therapy can focus on any important parts of your life, whether that's your relationships, your insight into yourself, your communication, your habits and behaviors, all kinds of things can be brought up in therapy. Therapy is actually pretty diverse. There are all different kinds of therapists, and we're gonna be talking about that in Small Bites next week. All different kinds of therapists, all different kinds of ways of doing therapy, and different beliefs and values in the therapy setting. Therapy is very process-based. That means that you're not going to therapy to have a specific outcome each time. You don't go to therapy and immediately feel better. You don't go to therapy and immediately your whole life changes and you don't do all your bad habits anymore. When you go to therapy, you're engaging in a process. Again, kind of similar to going to the gym. It's a little bit every time. You're working through a little bit every time and that's what's gonna bring you to a broader understanding. One of my favorite things about therapy is that it's dedicated space which means that it is a space, literally and figuratively, for you and only you to talk about yourself. And if you think about it, we very rarely get that opportunity because when we talk to our friends and our family, we're also talking about them. We're also including them in our understanding and in our processing. When you're with a therapist, they have no connection to any other part of your life. They don't know any of your family members. They don't know anything about your life, which means they only belong to you. That dedicated space is just for you. Now it may take time to get used to that dedicated space. We're not accustomed to having that kind of time carved out for us. So again, you go through that process and you start to realize how safe that space is you'll start to unearth things and talk about things that you maybe didn't even know were there. And therapy is very strategic. Your therapist is trained, which means they're not just going in like a friend and listening to you and nodding their head and making sympathetic noises. 
They are trained to think about what you're bringing to the table, to think about your own goals, and to help craft that process with you. So your therapist is being strategic about how they say things, what they say, when they say it, all of those things that happen in therapy, your therapist is, is cultivating that strategically. So therapists strategize about how they're working with you by using something called a theoretical orientation. And that's a big word and it's not very clear about what that means, but what it is is your therapist's beliefs and personal style and understanding of how they think change happens, what the mechanism of change is, how does somebody grow and change. So your therapist during training will have learned about all different kinds of therapy. Lots of science, lots of research, these things have been studied extensively. And so therapists generally resonate with different types of therapy and will seek out or get training in those specific areas. So when you're looking for a therapist, which we'll talk about next week, you're gonna wanna pay attention to therapeutic orientation because that's gonna tell you if that resonates with you also, if that's something that fits your beliefs about how change happens. Some examples of therapeutic orientation include cognitive behavioral therapy, interpersonal therapy, multicultural therapy, dialectical behavior. There's all different kinds of theoretical orientations, like a million of them. So if you just search on the internet, you'll find information about all of them. And you may start reading different orientations and feel yourself kind of pulled in one direction. And that's good information that tells you what the therapy is gonna feel like. So as we wrap up this video, I have a challenge for you. Go online and look up therapeutic orientations and find one that resonates with you. Drop it in the comments because we wanna know what you think, what resonates with you, and then we'll be able to do these kinds of videos or give you more information about those kinds of orientations. So go look for those, find ones you like, and drop them in the comments. Once again, thank you for joining us for Small Bites. You can find us online at thegraciousmind.com and all over social media platforms. We'll see you next week for how to find a therapist.